You're tuned to the Steve Donahue Show on CPL Radio, your one-stop daily source for Steve's take on the world of books. And now your host, the book critic who literally reads everything, Steve Donahue. Fellow patrons of the Cedarburg Public Library, and welcome back to the Steve Donahue Show, where we discuss bookish news, views, and reviews with the cold calculation of professional pollsters who got it all wrong just a few years ago. <laughs> and today's Tuesday fellow patrons, and not just any Tuesday. Today is election day here in the U.S., when Americans of all political stripes face the prospect of eight more years of Donald Trump in the public spotlight, either because he wins or because he immediately launches his 2024 campaign. And with the prospect of many Trump spawn to follow, and only the thin but real possibility of incarceration for the whole lot of them standing in the way, it's a grim prospect. And of course, it probably equates to a totally unproductive day for most of the adult human beings on Earth, as those human beings feverishly refresh their Twitter feeds either in mortal fear of a coup against the government or in fervent hope of one. All across the social media landscape, pundits and plebeians alike have been summarily declaring for days that they intend to get nothing whatsoever done today solemnly swearing that their productivity is completely destroyed and tending all the while to overlook the fact and encourage the rest of us to overlook the fact that since they spend 10 hours every day on Twitter as it is, their productivity couldn't have been much to write home to grandma about even before today came along to ruin it. But there's still an element of it all that's undeniably true since the entire future of the American experiment is being decided today. It'll be tough to think about anything else. But we should try, nevertheless. <laughs> Obsessing about the progress of the election doesn't affect that progress even a tiny bit. Even hawkishly watching for potential coups against the government is useless, since all the watching in the world won't stop those coups from being attempted. Americans can vote, they can phone bank, they can poll monitor, and they can march in protest when the Supreme Court hand it, hands Donald Trump the presidency in exactly the same way and done by exactly the same judges that handed it to the, pres the presidency to George W. Bush 20 years ago. But that's all Americans can do, and not all the worrying or obsessing in the world can add a bit of effectiveness to any of it. One constructive use of your political obsession today, however, is to channel it into reading. <laughs> America as a nation has been from its conception an intensely political creation, rather than, you know, say, military or feudal. And right from the beginning, Americans have written about politics in great heaping piles of pages. If you're going to spend today and tonight obsessing about politics, why not use that fact to get some first-rate reading done? <laughs> and along those lines, how about a few recommendations? Uh, if we go all the way back to the beginning, the founding bit of American political reading that everybody needs to read and reread is, of course, those seminal short works by Thomas Paine, Common Sense and the American Crisis. Virtually everything Paine wrote is worth reading, but these two little pamphlets captured the heart of the American separatist cause in ways that even the Declaration of Independence didn't quite do. And they make terrific reading, besides. Uh, for those of you more fictionally inclined, there are two American political novels that tower over all the others and very much deserve your attention. The first is All the King's Men by Robert Penn Warren, about the scandal-ridden gubernatorial career of a character named Willie Stark uh, in the 1930s American South. And the second is The Last Hurrah by Edwin O'Connor, about the campaign of a thoroughly jaded Frank Skeffington to gain office just one more time as mayor of a city that's pretty obviously 1950s Boston. These two novels are in many ways opposite sides of the same coin. All the King's Men is darkly tragic and wrenching, whereas The Last Hurrah is rollicking and at times very, very funny. But the first has its own dark humor, and the second has uh, the somber note of an era coming to an end. And both are superbly written, although in very different registers, each essentially in their own way to understanding the American political mind as it's filtered through fiction. If you prefer your American political writing unfiltered, so to speak, there are several must-read books, even just about what we might broadly refer to as the contemporary era. 
Hedrick Smith's The Power Game, for instance, is a masterful dissection of the political backroom maneuvering of the second half of the 20th century. And Theodore White's Pulitzer Prize-winning book, The Making of a President, 1960, not only takes readers inside the 1960 presidential campaign and all of the larger-than-life po uh, personalities associated with it, and, uh, <laughs> and of course, one who was infam infamously smaller than life, uh, but it also serves an excellent analysis of the American electoral politics just in general. Uh, but when it comes to contemporary era books on the heart, soul, and dark compulsions of American politics, no book really comes close to Richard Ben Kramer's masterpiece, Doorstop, What It Takes, which is on the surface a fine-grained study of the 1988 presidential race, but which also has been recognized for nearly 30 years as the Iliad, uh, or maybe more accurately, the Paradise Lost of American political writing. Of course, it could very well be that reading about American politics is positively the last thing you want to do today, and if that's true, I completely understand. And I still have recommendations. You could, for instance, read Stacey Schiff's excellent biography of Cleopatra, or Cal Newport's counterculture call to action digital minimalism about downplaying the very element that is going to play such a large role in your life today, your online existence. Uh, but my first call would be to Samuel Pepys, a London political official who kept a diary hundreds of years ago and filled it with such unpretentious, genuine, flawed humanity that even after all this time and with every last bit of it needing explanatory footnotes, it's still completely beguiling reading at a moment when you might really, really need to be beguiled. And there you have it, my fellow patrons, just a tiny tip of the iceberg when it comes to recommendations for politics-based literature. I'm hoping against hope that some of it gets you through the evening with your sanity more or less intact, but again, I'm not expecting miracles. Either way, I'll sign off for now and wish you somehow, against all odds, a very good bookish day. The Steve Donahue Show is a production of CPL Radio, a service of the Cedarburg Public Library located in Cedarburg, Wisconsin.